Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashkan Karbasrushan to discuss why growing a biz is like stepping on a doctor's scale. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Let's find out. You know I love preludes and analogies. <laughs> yeah. So this is the, I'll start with just the analogy. You know when you go to a doctor, they have those traditional scales, right? And you get on it, and let's say I'm 190. So mm. they, they go to 180, and then they push you to 200, and they're like, no, no, then they bring you back to 190, right? So what I've learned in the last two years is when you're building a business, it's kind of the same way where you do have to spread your wings, place all these bets, and at some point you realize, ooh, we spread ourselves too thin, we overshot, and then you have to kind of come back and find that equilibrium that leads to like a healthy weight for your organization. Because otherwise, you're spread too thin and you just do a lot of shitty things. Fair enough. Do uh, you want to elaborate? <laughs> sure. Yeah, okay. So, you know, we in 2016 celebrated our 10 year anniversary, wrote that 10 year, uh, 10 year overnight success book, got hacked. I went on a you know, vacation, wrote the book, came back. And to be honest with you, we were always talking to bigger companies that were like, hey, why don't you guys just become part of our company because we don't do digital and you guys don't get a lot of stuff. And there wasn't any ideal, never mind ideal, there was no no-brainer, this is a great fit. It was like, yeah, okay, you know, I want to see how much we could push the business. Could we become like Condé Nast or Hearst, this next diversified media company that grows out of, you know, the then platform of the era, us being video, internet, and YouTube. And so I kind of referred to it as Watch Mojo 2020, which was like a three-year plan where we would do like these 10 bets, building a direct sales force. You guys sometimes see these sponsorships now international, you see all these channels. You can make fun of it, but like we expanded into like game shows with the lineup. We did a semi-scripted with Worst Travel Show, um, you know, dabbled in scripted. It's a lot of back to the future where we're doing some things we used to do back in the day, just different, you know, but. And so we, we really, really did a lot, but a lot of people would come to me and say, hey, if you wanted to invest all this, why didn't you actually just sell or raise financing to do it? Why did you do it yourself? Which is true. Well, you know, the whole expression, other people's money, right? And that's where I'm kind of different. I actually was like, I yeah, really- you also have other people's rules. Yeah, well, not just rules, but you're then caught between a rock and a hard place because you have to both show confidence to the people that you're giving resources to and backing, but then you have somebody on your back that at first may be like, okay, I'll believe you, but then is gonna start questioning you day two. And they're going to want to pull the plug on things that don't work day four. And like the reason why Watch Mojo is where it is today with like 50 to 70 employees, never raised funding and independent is because we were patient and all that, right? So I guess the point I want to make is if you want to have kind of like a healthy balance, then, you know, for me and my personality, I didn't want to be caught between people that I'm pushing and encouraging and somebody that's then constantly second guessing me. And I wanted to place these bets and I wanted to kind of by myself figure out what works and what doesn't and maybe be more patient in some than others um, and then find that ha happy equilibrium and then say we got to pull back, right? Very transparently, at the end of last year, we were like 65 employees-ish. We had also had like with consultants 70 and if you include freelancers, we're over 100. And I don't like letting anybody go. I've never liked to lay anybody off, if, unless if it's like behavioral and they're crazy, which is not, doesn't, we've been fortunate with that. But I did allude to Vice Media that said they want to, through attrition, let go 15%. And if you go back to that company memo internal, I said that's impossible. They're too big. You know, they're like 1,000 employees or 2,000. They're not gonna, there's not gonna be hundreds of people that are just gonna be like, oh, I quit, right? But I knew internally that we had grown too much and I hired too many people and there were too many gigs that should have been freelance contract that I hired and too many projects that were embryonic and then because I'm not tough on people sometimes and I'm not like, this is losing money, you're in trouble, you know, I just give them rope and I'm like, let them do what they want. Um, but we did do that. Like we got to a healthy point through attrition. People that just were like, yeah, I've been here three years, I want to do something else. I was like, great, no hard feelings. you know. But so, again, the, the analogy I want to get to is if you don't overstretch yourself by raising funding, and this, if you follow our industry, recently there was an article about Mike. What went wrong at Mike? 
And it was like, you can talk all you want about what went wrong with Mike. What went wrong with Mike is they raised too much money. Are they the ones with that crazy office? Yeah, there? and then, yeah. okay, they raised too much money, and then they went out and got two floors in the World Trade Center. You don't need a 2,000-word article in the Huff Post, people. I have a picture where I wasn't, like, I was meeting them sometime when they started, and I took a picture from World Trade, and I was like, I don't even post on social media, but I was like, I feel bad posting, oh, visiting Mike at the World Trade. People would be like, what's wrong with these people, right? But so... I feel like if you want that healthy equilibrium, you have to make sure you don't kind of overindulge yourself with funding. You, have, you can't overindulge. Like, we took some bets. We hired two or three salespeople. We didn't hire 20. International, we didn't hire. Like, BuzzFeed UK, and BuzzFeed is fantastic. They've done so much. BuzzFeed UK learned the same thing that we did with Watch Mondo UK, which is you need to be present in the UK. But you don't need to have a massive presence where you're like, oh, look, we spent $50 million or whatever. So anyway, all to say, it does go back to balance. Easier said than done. But I feel like if you kind of can find that equilibrium, you can correct your course. And if you overdo it with the funding or the investment, there's nothing you can do to bring, put the genie back in the bottle and find balance. What grade are you giving yourself on your three-year plan? I, I, I double click and I go, you know, direct sales, B plus, A minus, because it's still not necessarily profitable, but it's definitely, I mean, you look at the, the, the pedigree of clients, Netflix, Universe. Look, Universal Studios coming back to us and saying, we want you guys to do this promo for Jurassic Park, let alone after the fact that our business is built on fair use. I mean, they're going to build, a, a, the, this is going to be an MBA successful case study that you guys get all the credit for. You know what I mean? Like, that's huge. But it, once we turn profitable there, that'll be an A minus. International, again, I double click there because like Japan is a hit, Espanol is a hit. Even if financially, none of them are necessarily crushing it, but like in terms of the things that I see, overall it's probably a B. There's a lot of NAs, you know, like I'll be honest with you, like we didn't do as much in scripted because I felt like everybody's gonna think it's a vanity project. And because of my near death experience also, I don't care anymore. I'm gonna do the kinds of projects that I wanna do because life's short. Um, and then there's some or that maybe are- Maybe that's its own scripted project. Well, that's actually part of it. Uh, that is part of why I haven't done it because there's a lot of stuff that are in the background that I'm like, this is great fodder for, for you know, to adapt. A, a, a somewhat boring story of Ash into like a sexier <laughs> fiction. But there's a, there's a few NAs and the things I would give myself a C minus or F, um, that'll be another context is, is King ah. episode, yeah. All right, well, uh, let us know how you think we did and uh, we, in the comments, and we will see you next time. And you already have. <laughs> yeah, you already have. You always do in the comments. Anyway, we'll see you next time. <laughs>